Welcome to the Dennis Report. I'm Dennis Acheson. This is an episode of As I See It. The impact of artificial intelligence on New Brunswick. It almost seems like a joke, maybe a sad joke, about how artificial intelligence is going to take over a certain number of jobs, and it will have a direct impact on New Brunswick. But for the most part, we don't see this coming yet. Maybe we need to wake up. Consider this article from Gwyn Dyer two years ago. And here's some of the sound bites from that clip. The first self-driving cars are already on the roads. Automation in the form of artificial intelligence will probably abolish almost all of the driving jobs in the next 20 years. In Britain alone, that means 400,000 driving jobs, big trucks and almost 300,000 licensed taxi drivers. Three quarters of a million jobs gone, say, and nothing plausible coming down the road to replace them. Scale it up to the size of the United States, and that's around four million American jobs gone. Not to foreign competition, not to outsourcing, just to technological change. And it's harder to replace drivers than bank tellers. Quote, every ATM is a ghost of three bank tellers but it just takes a little longer to develop the right software, talking about the driving. Currently in New Brunswick, on social media, there's much chatter about using the automated checkout at the different large-scale grocery stores. So if some of you are thinking this will never happen here, well, I'd like you to watch these two little clips. Predictions are these technologies will be widespread by 2025, roughly in the next five to seven years. That is our window of time to adapt to the impact. If you think New Brunswick's safe because we're small, not a major market, well then, what about call center jobs? And so much of New Brunswick has adapted into the call center industry with tax rebates and incentives for companies to move their call centers to New Brunswick. We used it as a solution, we said, to our economic woes. Well, check this out. Michael Corbett, he had an interview in the Financial Times and basically said that he could cut tens of thousands of the U.S. bank's call center jobs. In some respects, that's not a surprise. In other respects, that's not a good headline. 
Well, it is a, it is a surprise to the, in the sense that a lot of the automation and the jobs around automation have been targeted towards things that are repetitive, right? Mm -hmm. So if you have a, a certain number of people you expect each time to call up and say, I need to change my bank account or I need X, you can program the natural la language processing computers and robots to, to deal with that technology. Yeah, I found that interesting too because I wouldn't have connected those two things up. I mm -hmm. mean, you're looking mm -hmm. at the BB&T merger, so we don't need to do anything like that. But also you wonder, part of it is because I think I can make more money, I can increase my margin by using machines. I don't need to buy another company. That's and right. I mean, it is what the banks are saying. They're saying technology is going to help us cut costs yeah. and enable us to do to, to continue to grow. But, you know, that also involves getting technology to work really quickly. Now, what about this story from Extreme Tech, July 10th, 2018? The so-called Google Duplex system is capable of calling a business and making an appointment for its client. That's you. Google has reportedly been fielding offers from businesses that want to put duplex to work in call centers. The next customer service rep you speak to could be a machine. So in an interview with now Premier Blaine Higgs in 2017, we talked about artificial intelligence and its potential impact. And here's what Mr. Higgs had to say. That's going to impact New Brunswick. That's going to impact Canada. You'd like to think there's a national strategy that's basically saying, <laughs> what's out there that's really going to have a, a face change impact on us? Yeah. And I mean, it could be like um, we've seen with the forest industry in the sense of what big step change in the decline of, uh, of usage in, in the forest products and in the, in the decline in the necessary mills. What could happen in the oil industry where all of a sudden, you know, there is that, that innovative approach in electric cars and, and, and it could happen over like, like Kodak, remember? When yeah, the, Kodak, the changes will happen quickly in some cases. They will, but yeah. that but, but doesn't mean that, you know, people are looking at this. I, I, I know a, a little story that years ago when I was uh, 10 years old, I was in, in New York City at the World's Fair. Okay. And, and I, was, uh, I went to a General Motors pavilion and I went through this and it was a history of transportation. Mm -hmm. And when I came out of it and then in, in the foyer at the end of it, there were all these cars of the future. And guess what was one thing in common with these cars? No steering wheel. <laughs> they they, the they just coordinate car. driverless car. Mm -hmm. They just cord you put in your coordinates and then you, then you sat back. Now that, that really upset me at 10 years old. Because I said, here, I'm not going to have a license for another six years. <laughs> and by the time I get there, there'll be no more driving cars. Yeah. And, and there I'll be. Yeah. Um, but I'm quite happy now if it came to fruition. <laughs> but I guess the point was, here's a, here's a technology yes. that is out there 50 years ago. Yeah. And, and it's just now kind of making it to the roads and being tested in, in yeah. some areas. Like I think Ontario is testing mm -hmm. this, yeah. this technology. Well, how many others are there that you, you might say, that's got potential at some point. And when you talk about robotics, I mean, that's been around a yes. long time. Yeah, but the application of it now is is, is moving in. Is moving further. But why has it been moving, and why is it more of an issue? Look in New Brunswick. You know, when you look across the province, we have difficulty filling jobs. Just about every company has difficulty filling jobs. So, so why is that? People don't want to do these jobs. Well, okay, what jobs do people want to do? Mm. And, and then are those jobs available? You know? So what's the point of all this? Well, we have to make a choice. Are we going to wait and react when large portions of our labor force are automated and many people are out of work? Or are we going to plan in advance for the transition to come? And if we're going to plan, what does that plan look like? And how are we all going to get on the same page? Be good, have fun, love each other.